Good evening, Karina Cavallo with ABC News. It's been an extraordinary day in Australia-US relations. President Donald Trump has publicly branded the two nations' refugee resettlement deal dumb. And members of his team have leaked sensitive details of his weekend phone conversation with Malcolm Turnbull to undermine the agreement. Here's National Affairs correspondent Greg Janet. With hindsight, we could have read the body language. Donald Trump animated, his chief strategist Stephen Bannon distracted, and national security adviser Michael Flynn brooding in the corner. All the president's men had had a long day in the Oval Office. The call to Malcolm Turnbull was the last of five with world leaders, and the Prime Minister gave a business-like report of its tone. I had a constructive call with President Trump yesterday. The White House had an altogether different version and has briefed it out to the Washington Post. This was the worst call by far, the president's quoted saying, after hanging up 25 minutes into a scheduled hour-long call. It was described to me as, uh, as contentious, certainly, and at times hostile. Hostilities had broken out when Malcolm Turnbull asked Mr Trump to honour his refugee resettlement deal made with Barack Obama. All week he's been convinced he would. These conversations are uh, conducted candidly, frankly, uh, privately. Not anymore. The exasperated president's gone public. Do you believe it? The Obama administration agreed to take thousands of illegal immigrants from Australia. Why? I will study this dumb deal, he tweeted. He's well, crab walking away from it. No, no, I don't think that's... I, 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 no, that's not... Ben, this is not a deal that he would have done. Donald Trump's made that much abundantly clear. The leaked account of his chat with Mr Turnbull had him saying this is the worst deal ever, believing he's going to get killed politically and suggesting Australia was trying to export the next Boston bombers. We've never had a president, in, in my memory, uh, who has bullied our friends in this way. The White House has been waging a determined campaign to cast doubt over the deal, starting with a call to the ABC's Washington Washington bureau chief and following up with a written statement earlier today that the president is still considering whether or not he'll move forward with this deal. The arrangement stands until it's revoked and the government maintains that officials are still working on applying it. But privately, even a minister concedes that Trump hates this deal, despite the public position that everything's locked in. We have certainly received uh, an assurance that the agreement remains in place. The President assured me that he would uh, continue with uh, honour the uh, agreement we entered into. The government, like the refugees, has a helpless weight on the whim of a no-rules President. Let's get more from Greg Jennett in Canberra. Greg, talk about mixed messages. What are the chances of this refugee deal going ahead? Let's try and answer your question, Karina, with this question. If a US president thought a deal was dumb, would he go ahead and honour it anyway? Well, that's obviously the position that the Australian government now finds itself in, hoping against hope that Donald Trump does just that. But there are risks involved even if he does, because he's regarded as a consummate dealmaker, Donald Trump, and who knows what sort of favours he might seek to extract from Australia to even the score into the future. They could take any form, for instance, uh, militarily from the Middle East all the way through to our region with obvious risks of butting us up against our relationship with China, for instance. So they are risks. And there's also a lesson here too for other world leaders. The conduct of the president and his team tells us that they're prepared to be quite brutal in making their feelings known when they reckon they're being backed into a corner. And uh, we see that in the form of Donald Trump's extraordinary tweet, but also in the way that the White House leaked out those details of the conversation. And Greg, Malcolm Turnbull has also had to defend his personal donations to the Liberal Party today. Yes, easy to forget in all of this, Karina, that it's not every day that a serving Prime Minister makes a record donation to his political party. But Malcolm Turnbull's been trying to explain that today, but at the same time shrouding some of those big political ideas that he wanted to lay down for 2017 throughout this week, as our political editor, Chris Hillman, explains. The Prime Minister's drawing fire after finally revealing a huge campaign donation. 
I contributed $1.75 million. If Malcolm Turnbull thinks it's fine to buy the Prime Ministership, uh, why wasn't he prepared to be upfront with the Australian people when he made this donation? The gift was a lifeline to a cash-strapped campaign. When you back the Liberal plan for a strong new economy, you're backing more jobs. And came after the books closed on the financial year, meaning the declaration could have been buried for another year. Mr Turnbull loves to talk about transparency, but he acts tricky. The seven-digit donation is also a gift to Labor. I don't think most Australians can comprehend spending $1.75 million full stop. Bill Shorten's attacks on the Prime Minister's wealth have clearly nettled Malcolm Turnbull. He hates that and he calls me Mr Harborside Mansion. Well, he has lived off trade unions or governments all his life. And this has become a very personal battle. I can't be bought by anyone. I'm not a wholly owned subsidiary of the CFMEU like Bill Shorten. Mr Turnbull likes to attack me because he's seriously annoyed at the fact that I say that he's seriously out of touch. Malcolm Turnbull says he's simply putting his money where his mouth is. Standing up for the values that I believe are critically important for Australia's future. But the opposition leader gave voice to a criticism that's being echoed by some in the coalition. I think Mr Turnbull, at the very least, has exercised appalling judgment in the manner in which he's been forced to disclose the amount of money. It's been a tough start to the year for the Prime Minister and he returns to the blast furnace of Parliament next week. Chris Yulman, ABC News, Canberra.